Hello, my name is George Cairns, and in this video lesson, we're going to use Digital Photo Professional 4 to selectively adjust tones using two different techniques. We're going to make some level adjustments using the Gamma Adjustment Panel to selectively lighten up underexposed shadows and reveal more detail and color without blowing out correctly exposed highlights. And I'm going to show you how to use the Tone Curve Panel as well to selectively darken washed out midtones to create a shot with more contrast. So kick off by downloading our two start files to your computer and then browse to them in the folder window here and they'll appear as thumbnails in the main workspace. Let's start with this shot here, click to select it and then I can pop up to view and go to edit image window. And to check the exposure of the shot, I can first of all turn on the clipping warning by clicking here and you can see that these blue patches are clip shadows that are gonna print out with no detail, they'll just be very black. And you can see these underexposed shadows at the far left of the histogram. They have a level of 000, and that's pure black. And if there were any bright highlights in the shot, they'd have a value of 255, 255, and 255 for the reds, greens, and blues. But there's nothing really showing up at the far right there. So we can see that the brightest highlights are actually quite underexposed. So we need to remap the levels of our problem areas to brighten them up and create a wider spread of tones in the histogram. So we're going to be needing this. Let's right click to choose float. You can place that anywhere on the screen and then you can scroll down to the gamma adjustment because this is one way to remap problem levels to create healthier tones that reveal more detail. And one way to remap the problem tones in the picture is to use the vertical sliders that are overlapping this histogram graph in the gamma adjustment panel. This one controls the shadows, this one controls the midtones, and this one controls the highlights. So if we go to the shadow slider and drag that to the right, as soon as it touches the histogram graph, you're going to see more clipping is appearing because it's remapping these areas as we go over them. It's remapping some of the midtones now and giving them darker shadow values. And if you look at the histogram as well, you can see that this area is peaking far to the left there as we're remapping midtones and giving them darker values. We're getting more peaking here, which is also corresponding to the clipping in these blue patches. So I don't want to go too far to the right at all, or I'm just creating more clipping. So I'm going to select this little box here, type in zero and hit return to reset that because the shadows are already dark enough. We actually want to lighten them up. And to do that, we need to use this middle slider here, the mid-tone control. So click to select that. And as we drag that to the left, we're remapping the mid-tones and giving them a lighter and brighter value. And as we move more towards the shadow end, it's remapping the shadow input levels and giving them lighter output levels. So you can see now we've got rid of most of the clipping. It's worth leaving a little bit of clipping there because we want to have some dark shadows just to create a nice strong contrast in the image. But we can now see much more detail here and you'll notice that the histogram graph has slid more towards the right here. These darker shadows now have fallen down a little bit and slid to the right there to show they've got lighter levels than they had when we started. And finally, we can target the highlights by clicking on the far right slider here. And as we drag that to the left, it will remap the brighter tones to even brighter values. You can see the histogram is sliding more towards the right at the highlight end. And we're getting some clipping there now on the boat just to show we've got some nice white areas in the shop. This area is pretty white anyway in the actual subject matter, so it doesn't matter that it's clipped because we're not really losing any important detail. We now have some white highlights dark shadows, a nice healthy contrast with much more detail in the midtones. And that's all done by remapping the shot's original input levels to different and brighter output levels. But we're doing it selectively to make sure that we get the detail in the areas that we need from shadows to midtones to highlights. So that's one way to remap input levels to different output levels. Another way is to use curves. So I'm just gonna go back to edit image here and take us back into the main browser. I'm gonna click on this shot here, and then I'm gonna go back to view and choose edit image window. And here we can see a rather washed out looking shot with a washed out looking histogram. The darkest shadows stop about here. They don't go to the far left there, which has got zero, zero, zero. Let's use the cursor to sample some of these midtones. Yeah, they've got a value of RGB 64, 86 and 99. So that's nothing like zero, zero, zero. It shows they're very bright and midtony rather than having any shadow value. So it's lacking contrast this shot and we need to give it a little bit more. We've got some bright highlights as you can see from the clipping warning, but what we're gonna do is use the tone curve panel to remap those midtones and give them a darker value to create a little bit more contrast. So click to go to the tone curve panel and you can see that we have a curve. It starts at the left here in the shadows and goes all the way up to the far right for the highlights. But the curve initially isn't a curve at all. It's a straight line. So it's not making any changes to the underlying histogram. 
But if you click and place points on the curve, you can lighten and darken areas selectively. So what we want to do, first of all, is just change it from RGB. You can see the reds, greens, and blues there. Let's go to luminance, because it just makes it easier to control all of those together in one grayscale curve. So let's click to place a point in the middle, first of all. That works as a bit of an anchor, so when we start messing around with the shadows, we don't alter the highlights too much. And it's really darker shadows we want. So if I click here, shadows and midtones are kind of underneath this one. And if I drag down, you can see that the shadows in the image are getting darker. And look at the histogram at the top left there. The shadows are spreading more to the left, so we're getting darker shadows by remapping the midtones using this point on the curve. We're giving these midtones a darker output level just to darken them. And that looks much darker in the photograph now. We haven't got any clipping yet, but if we click down nearer the bottom left to create a new point on the curve and drag that down, then we probably start to see some clipping on the boat there. Yeah, you can see a little bit on those people there. So we now know we've got some nice dark shadows and lots of texture and detail in the midtones, as well as some bright clipped highlights. So the photograph is looking much better with this little tweak. And as we drag the shadows down, these points here on the highlight area do push up a little bit, even though we've anchored it in the middle. And this is a bit of an S curve shape now, which is a great way of improving contrast by darkening the shadows at the bottom left and lightening the highlights at the top right. You could click to add points here and push them up, but then we'd get even more clipping in the photograph. So we don't need to worry about the highlights in this particular shot. They're strong enough already. Indeed, if you think the highlights are too strong and you want to actually reduce clipping, you can go to the very top here and drag this down a little bit. And that's remapping the brightest input levels to a slightly darker values. So you can see we've actually got rid of the clipping completely. I'm gonna try and go to around about here just to drop the clipping slightly, but we still want some bright highlights. And these white areas in the photograph aren't that important. There's no important detail being lost by having a little bit of clipping there. I always like to have some dark shadows and some bright highlights just to know I've got a strong contrast. And it's always nice to compare the before with the after. You can see the washed out start image and now the improved contrast in our end result thanks to the adjustments we've made in the curves panel.